Sphere. 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 This is Hyperturismos, a podcast by Mel Julu for the Sphere Project. Available on Europod, the European podcast platform. I do feel like it is the case where people are actually feel like this is a lost battle, essentially, right? There's a, you know, there are a few people trying to fight something that perhaps even a lot of people don't even want, you know, may people want, a lot of people do want the island to be developed. A lot of people want higher buildings, more buildings, more buildings on the cliff, more buildings in Vlihada, more buildings uh, in places that are still pristine. Uh, so, you know, and I know a few other people share this kind of notion that it is a, maybe a lost cause or maybe it is a battle that's been lost, but I do feel that we need to give this battle. Hyperturismos, a podcast by Mel Julu for the Sphera Project. Episode 5, Who Even Cares? You have to actually be able to say we need to preserve something so that it can be here for the next generations. It's very important for the future because you can't expect that with, uh, you know, how things are developing now and how, you know, people have different interests that everyone is going to be interested in that. And the majority just isn't interested in that. Remember Lefteris? He tries to preserve Santorini by sharing her treasures and raising awareness on her challenges. Based on his experience with the community, He told me that the people who talked to me about the problem of over-tourism for this podcast were the people who care, but that I have to keep in mind that they do not represent the whole island. Among this minority who cares, there is Annie from the Cyclades Preservation Fund. She shared with me how her association is supporting people who want to act for the island's sustainability. The few conservationists, you know, the minority are there and will be there. And actually most of them are volunteers. So what we're doing is trying to build capacity and empower them. And we do it well, I think, you know, and we also network them in a way that makes them feel even more powerful so that they're not isolated anymore. They're not alone. They feel. And it's also, I would say, um, um, a moral satisfaction for someone to feel that, you know, they've devoted their lives in doing things that nobody else would have done, which are so precious, and nobody say, ever, ever th- says a thank you. Our goal is to make sustainability the new normal. This is actually where we want to go. And to do so, we, we need everyone on board. They are the voice of the environment and they are the future. And on their shoulders, we are standing, but they cannot bring the change on their own. The gigantic task of protecting the island from the impact of over-tourism surely cannot be done by these few volunteers on their own. Do they have any support? From the municipality, maybe? The current mayor of Santorini, Adonis Sigalas, has been in office for almost three years. Many locals told me that they heard about a municipal meeting to handle the sustainability of the island, mostly in terms of waste management and infrastructures. But anyway, concrete actions don't follow. I contacted the mayor office for an interview, but they never answered. The former mayor of Santorini, Nikos Zorzos, already appeared in episode 3. He was the one who raised this issue for the first time when he was in charge. When I talked about over-tourism back in 2012, for the major part of the society, it wasn't acceptable. Many people were criticizing me, saying that I should not speak about these things, that it was a bad thing for Santorini to be spoken outside the border. Little by little, the local society started to understand what was going on, and today it is more acceptable to talk about over-tourism in Santorini. Despite our own way of thinking, Santorini has to be protected. One of the concrete measures taken by the municipality in 2019 was a daily limit for cruise ship passenger, setting a maximum of 8,000 people a day, when before the number was reaching more than 18,000 people per day. An urban plan is also being created to restrict building, but it takes time 
and there are not enough municipal employees to take care of the work needed. In any case, it saved the vineyards to a large percentage. It made building a little bit stricter, but in the end we see that it is not enough to save Santorini. Since 2012, I have placed the term over tourism in public dialogue on the island. I was continuously asking the government to stop the development. But the municipalities in Greece are not totally independent to take such important decisions. In the third episode, Apostolos and Marta told us about how the government is blocking the creation of the Marine Protected Area, the MPA. It seems that even when municipalities are putting sustainability in the agenda, a lot of things are not moving at a higher level of decision. But why? What is preventing the national government from taking concrete steps? I found an interview of the current Minister of Tourism in Greece, Vasilis Kirikas, for CNN. I see tour operators, I see travel agents, I see airline companies here from the United Kingdom, USA, France. They want to come, they're going to come early, March, April. But how do you prevent the over-tourism that we have seen in so many places? We don't want to go back to the bad old days. And nobody's really got a solution because you either use economics to price people or you use regulation to determine who goes and who doesn't. Thank you for the question. There's no magical answer. So what you do is you, you strengthen infrastructure. We've got 320 million from our RRF fund, the European Resilience Fund, to put into infrastructures, to build better infrastructures, to help small islands de- deal with that. And I told you before, and I'm honest about it, They're not just two or three or five brand locations in Greece. There can be a hundred locations in Greece. So let's spread travelers and tourists all over the place, around the country, north and south. But are we heading to a scenario where eventually you're going to have to say enough? I don't like enough. I I want more. I want want quality. I want better income, better uh, jobs, better paid, higher paid. And I have no problem. We have no problem with volume. That's what I was afraid of. It will never be enough. Yes, the improvement of infrastructures can help Santorini, but it's far from solving the huge challenge the island is facing. To attract tourists in other Greek destinations can also spread the crowd, but this never enough politics makes it scary. No island or city wishes to end up like Santorini. Ellie, a seasonal worker in IA, feels like the government is sacrificing Santorini. And she's not the only one who said that to me. I think uh, they uh, put everybody here because, okay, it's a special island, okay? Uh, you like a unique, unique place. So the go- government, I think, uh, understand that uh, they can take more money with this island. It seems like change will not happen as urgently as needed. At least not if we count on the authorities, local or national, to take actions. Lefteris has a different approach and feels like it's up to the locals to take their fate in their own hands, individually. He sets the example by being active in the preservation of the cultural heritage of Santrini during his free time. Personally, I feel like uh, things should be done uh, not just on a state or municipal level, but it's it's up to the individual people as well to do things. Someone might say, and why would you do it? And why would you want to have that approach? I'm trying to see it from the perspective of what will people see here in 50 years or 100 years or 200 years? What will we have preserved uh, in terms of the island in order to pass it down to the next generations? It's up to the locals as well to help support that because you you can't expect everything from, for example, from the Ministry of Culture or from the effort of antiquities or from the municipality. And it's easy to criticize and to say, you know, oh, you haven't done this and you haven't done that. You know, if something is, you know, hundreds of years old, you have to be proactive and try and save it. So it's up to the locals to try and do that as well. You know, it's easy to complain 
about the island like uh, something else. But the, la the island, it's us. We are the island. If uh, you still see Santorini as opportunity to make money, and people came just for that, they could not uh, hope, you know, for the island. This is my friend Thanos from Santorini Walking Tours. What he said still resonates with me. The island is not something else. The island, it's us. It's us and everybody who brings life to it. Even if it's very convenient for me to say I'm not a local, I'm not a tourist, and feel kind of exterior to the situation, I'm still a part of the island and each of my actions has an impact. That being said, I can't help but think that businesses have a lot of responsibility in how the island has become and how it will be in the future. For Annie, director of the Cycladis Preservation Fund, businesses' owners are a key to changing the impact of tourism on the island. I think that the business, uh, the companies, should be the number one ally because, you know, they take a lot, so they need to give something back. I need to be optimist and admit that there are a lot of efforts that we see from different places across Greece, um, including businesses. We, we see the tourism sector being more sensitive, offering more opportunities. They want and they rebrand themselves as sustainable and they do take some measures towards this direction. Uh, some of them try to recycle more or even become more zero waste, closer to the zero waste approach. Some of them encourage, st have started encouraging their clients, the tourists, the visitors to um, explore and discover alternative, uh, let's say, uh, destinations and options such as, for example, you know, discover the pathways of an island or even enjoy fishing tourism. Fishing tourism is the experience of getting on a boat of a professional fisher and watching experiences the real experience of fishing in the Greek seas on the traditional boat and meeting the islanders. In this way, the fisher has an income and this means that he or she will not have to put as much pressure on the fish stocks to get this income. That's a great example of a change of economic model in Santorini, resulting in a win-win situation. But of course, altogether, if the state sees that there is pressure and interest on behalf of the local society and on behalf of the businesses, so if they see that hmm, there is here a movement, then they will react. They cannot ignore the power. They may ignore the individuals, but they cannot ignore you know, like the power of communities. And even more, they cannot ignore the power of businesses. Unfortunately, we don't see in Santorini a very noticeable movement from the businesses providing service for tourists to ensure the sustainability of the island. If we continue in that direction, Santorini might not be able to be saved. When will the industry wake up and really adapt its offer? There is a possibility that uh, there will be a small earthquake and a hotel in the caldera will fall from the cliffs. If this happens, Everything will change. If a, a hotel or a pool just goes down to the cliff, this is the moment that the island will change at least for some years. It makes me sad that we would have to wait for something like that for a wake-up call to happen and to understand that the race for profit is going too far. Now we know the problem is here. It's not a secret. But it's time to stop pointing fingers most of the people who spoke to me are conscious that in order to make tourism more respectful of the local life and the environment, it has to become a general movement in Santorini, including the tourists themselves. Tourism is seriously linked to the threat of sustainability. Not on purpose, we don't blame tourists, you know, and actually most of them, I understand that if they find the right structures, for example, on an island where they're visiting, if they find the recycling bins, they will recycle. If they find, you know, like a tap water where they can tap water or places where they can refill their bottle, they will do that. They won't need to buy new plastic bottles. So it has to do on one hand from the uh, what kind of, of structures you know you, you offer to the visitors and to the tourists 
and how you as an islander treat to your island. And then, of course, it has to do with the awareness of the people who are coming and how conscious they are that they want and can become also responsible tourists and not only, you know, like uh, tourists who are looking for themselves. They should respect the place that they're visiting. Annie is right. Activists, businesses, politicians, island citizens but also tourists themselves can act at their level to provide a more livable future to Santorini. But at this stage, I would like to enlarge the topic and ask the question, what can each of us as European citizens can do? In the next episode, we unfocus from Santorini and discuss over tourism as a European issue that affects many destinations and is threatening new communities and natural areas. I will talk with Professor Antonio Russo to think globally and to start rethinking the way each of us travel. As an enthusiastic traveler, I'm wondering, is sustainable travel the answer? What does it even mean? Should we stop traveling altogether? <laughs>